Once we get through this piece, we will have all the tools and understanding we need to start programming our channels and programming our radios. So today's topic is one that people don't necessarily always understand, and that is PL tones and NAT codes. What, do P, what are PL tones and NAT codes and why do we need to worry about these things? Well, they're a land mobile technology and they're going to show up in a lot of different scenarios. So we're going to take a look and understand how these work and move forward and then we're going to get into actually programming channels and understanding our CPS and how to get these radios up and moving. So thanks for joining us today. I hope this is informational for you. And here we are with PL tones and NAC codes. Okay, so what is a PL tone anyway? A PL tone is simply, think of it as a squelch filter. It's gonna filter out traffic that we don't wanna hear. It's in by no means any type of encryption or any type of security. It's simply a filter that we're putting on the radio. The reason being is a lot of channels are shared. The same information, the same transmit, and the same receive is shared on a lot of different frequencies. And what we want to be able to do is just hone in on the conversations that we are interested in. As we learned early on, frequencies are very expensive to buy. So a lot of agencies, counties, departments want to make those frequencies go as far as we can make them go and PL tones is a way of driving traffic and segregating the traffic so that we can use it more effectively. Okay, again, not security. Anybody can hear you if they have on that frequency if they don't have tones enabled. So don't ever think that we're gonna trick anybody or they're not gonna be able to hear us. We're just electing not to hear them, okay? So, PL tones, uh, they go by a number of different names. It's a PL tone. You might have heard of as CTCSS tone or subaudible tone. They are all the same thing. So how do these work? Let's take a quick look and understand how this all goes together and why we use them. Okay, so I'm going to show you just on a simple idea here is we have the white channel. Okay, the white channel is a repeater channel. We have a receive of 136 we have the transmit of 154. So when we select the white channel, there's no PL tones, it's open squelch. We go out and we hit the towers and they hear us and they repeat the signal. And anybody tuned to the white channel can hear us. Pretty simple. Goes out everywhere, there's no filtering, nothing going on, open squelch, everybody can hear us. Okay, that might not always be the best scenario, but we might, want to do is towers might be spread out over a large distance we might want to segregate that traffic a little bit okay so on the white channel here I have a uh, mock-up of what I'll call St. Croix County so we have the white channel and it's working across four towers in the county so that means anybody that's down here at the bottom of the county hitting this tower is getting repeated all the way across the county even up to the top of the county now, some areas this might be 12 miles and it might make sense. Other places, this might be 150 miles. And these guys here in your traffic down here 150 miles away is not necessarily conductive to a good operation. So how do we direct that? Well, we've only got these two frequencies, 154 and 136. So we have to figure out how to make those work. And the way we do that is PL tones. So the way a PL tone works is what we're doing is we are putting a filter frequency on our channel. Okay, My receive frequency and my transmit frequency haven't changed. All I'm doing is adding this PL tone or sub-audible tone. On the receive, my radio is looking for 100.4. On transmit, it's looking for a PL tone of 100.4. Okay, My tower is doing the same thing. Everybody on the green channel is doing the same thing. The receive and the transmits all line up and the PL tones line up. So the way this works is when I go to key up my radio on my transmit, the first signal that's sent is this PL tone. And this PL tone is sent and says I'm, the PL is 100.4, it's kind of like a key. This tower, the green tower, is looking for that PL tone to be sent before it will open and pass traffic. So as long as I'm mashing my mic, there's a subaudible tone underneath the frequency and underneath my voice channel that is 100.4, telling the tower 
to keep it squelch open and pass the traffic. So I key up, it goes out, it opens up the tower, the tower passes the traffic, and when it does the same thing, it also is going to transmit on its transmit frequency 100.4. It's going to come down to each air, each subscriber radio, and everybody's going to hear on the green channel. Now here's the gotcha. There's a gotcha here. This gentleman, the bad guy down here, is on channel one, but he has the same receive and transmit frequencies programmed. No PL. His squelch is open. So he's still going to hear everything we say. He's going to hear everything on the green channel just with an open squelch. Again, no security here. It's just driving traffic to where we want to have it. It doesn't stop somebody from listening in open squelch. I have another tower down here using the same transmit, same receive frequencies, but its PL tone is set to 64. When it sees my traffic, the PL tones will not match and the tower is not going to pass traffic. It's just going to ignore the traffic. Okay, so pretty simple ideas. Um, basically what the idea here is we're driving traffic and we're segregating traffic to separate resources on the ground. Even though we're using the same transmit, the same receive frequencies, we're using them effectively to drive traffic and keep traffic local. So our green channel receive 136, transmit 154.2, PL100. Anybody set to the green channel has this set up. It's hitting the green tower and transmitting back and giving everybody the communication they need. The guys down here on the red channel, again, same transmit, same receive, different PL. They're not hearing a thing. They will see the receive light on their radio go off. You know, you're going to see that receive light moving, and that's okay. It's going to be flashing at you green, but you're not hearing anything. That's meant to be. You need to understand that just because you're not hearing something doesn't mean somebody's not already talking on the frequency. So whenever we have PL tones in play, we have to take a gander at the radio, look at our, our receive light, and see if somebody's on frequency that we're just electing not to hear. We don't want to step on them, so we have to take that quick two-second check to see that we have an open frequency. This is why we do it. It's a pretty simple idea. Here is our St. Croix County again. So let's say St. Croix County is 100 miles across and 80 miles wide, or I'm sorry, 80 miles wide, 100 miles wide and 80 miles high. So I've got a green channel up here, a red channel down here, and the blue channel here. And the only thing separating these, making these different, is the PL tone. And the reason being is now the guys at the top of the county that are up here are only going to hear the traffic that pertains to them. The guys down here at the bottom of the county in the red channel, they're only going to hear what pertains to them. And the blue side is also only going to hear what pertains to them. So we're not going to be having the cross traffic and having to hear all the red channel traffic over here in the blue zone. And that helps guide things and makes things a little bit easier and centralizes the information that you need to hear. So it's a pretty simple, again, it's a pretty simple idea. It's basically just, I'm going to send out a tone and the other radio is looking for that tone. If it hears it, it opens and passes traffic. If it doesn't, it's not going to, it's just going to ignore the call and let it go on by and not open. Okay, but again, receive and transmit's the same. So you have to take a quick look at that radio and see if somebody else is currently using that those two frequencies. I'm not going to say the channel because the channels are different. The frequencies are the same and you will see that you will see that receive light blinking. Okay, NAC codes. Those PL tones are always used on an analog channel. We only use PLs on an analog channel. On a digital channel we use what we call a NAC code. Okay, same setup exactly. We have to set the receive frequency. We have to set the transmit frequency. But on a digital channel, a digital mode, we have to set the NAC code, which is the network address code. 
network address codes kind of do the same thing as a PL tone. You have to match your network address code to the other guy's radio network address code or it won't work. NAT codes are generally set by somebody who's setting up the channel and owns the channel. They're going to set a NAT code and you're going to get that information. The default is 293. So let's say I set up my channel and I accept the NAT code at the default of 293, but everybody else is on 295. They're not going to hear a word that I say, and I'm not going to hear a word that they say. We're filtering them out again because our NAT codes aren't matching. When the NAT codes match, the radio will open squelch. Okay, we can see the same thing. We can see receive and transmit frequencies being used on multiple channels with different NAT codes. It is possible. So digital channels, NAT code, analog channel, PL tones. Okay, so we're going to take a look now at the radio so we understand when we're dealing with a PL tone. Okay, so here is our TDFM radio. And what I'm going to show you, what we're going to focus on, is this little symbol right here, this little speaker symbol. We already know the arrow tells us it's a direct channel. The next symbol that we see is a little speaker, what looks like a speaker symbol. If that little speaker is there, think of it, that means I can hear the channel. It's open squelch. We're going to hear everything. Okay, if I tune to a different channel. On this particular channel, MD4, it's still a direct channel, but you note that the speaker is gone. That means that I have PL tones in play. There are PL tones programmed on this channel. Simple enough. Okay, so one radio, FRS 22, direct channel with no PL tones. On this radio, VHF, FPP MT4 is a direct channel with a PL tone. So here's how we can troubleshoot and here's where we can use this knowledge. Let's say I am on MT4 and I make my radio call and I toot and I key up and I make my radio call blah 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 and then I let up. Okay now I see a flashing green light but I'm not hearing any traffic. I see somebody is repeat, replying to me, but I'm not hearing them. Okay, so just to double check, make sure that it's not just me or a random, another random call on that. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to key up. I'm going to make my call, blah, 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 let up. And again, I see a flashing, let's say I see a flashing green light. Somebody's replying to me, but I'm not hearing them. So what I have the option of doing and what we encourage our operators to program into one of the buttons is what's called we call a monitor key. Monitor allows us to bypass the receive PL tone, kind of like erase the receive PL tone so we hear all the traffic. The, when we do that, in this case, by default we have it programmed to F1. I can hold that button and you'll see the speaker opens up and if I hold it long enough, it will latch open. Okay, now I make my call. Blah, 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 blah. And I let up. Oh, I latched it open, sorry. I have it set up different here. You latch it open, you make your call, and then you listen. And now you will hear that traffic. If you hear the traffic, you know you. it's not a frequency problem, it's a PL tone mismatch. And that does happen. The more things we throw into a frequency, the greater the chance of having something fat fingered or, or mismatched. We always set up PL tones on both the transmit and the receive, and they can be different. So we want to pay close attention to that. So PL tones, they come into play mostly during repeater operations. They're generally not a, a uh, direct channel kind of uh, tool. We don't see a lot of that, but they are used to drive traffic to the right repeater. Red one, green one, blue one, you know, whatever your channels happen to be. Um, TAC1, TAC2, TAC3, they might all share the same transmit receive frequencies. The difference is the PLs. So it is possible to see these things get mixed up. Okay, so we have gone through now PL tones. We have gone through modes. We have gone through repeater channels and direct channels. And we have gone through 
the basic setup and understanding how the system is working. So congratulations, you have made it through the hardest part of the course. Now we are gonna get into taking a look at our Motorola CPS and starting to put some of this land mobile knowledge to work. So thank you for joining us for episode four of Radio 101. We appreciate your patronage and I'm looking forward to getting into what everybody wants to understand a little bit better in, with these radios is how do I program these CPS in CPS. So thanks again. You guys have a great day and we will see you next time on Radio 101.